Okay, beta. So this uh, superposition is actually the second topic of wave and uh, second chapter of wave, and this is very important uh, topic because uh, the probability um, for one question to come in theory is uh, very high from this topic. So superposition is the chapter name, and uh, the first topic is stationary waves or standing waves. So what we have to do is we have to first see what is principle of superposition or what is superposition. Then we have to see that how standing waves are, or stationary waves are formed in all type of waves, like in microwaves, in radio waves, in ropes, or in water. Uh, then we have to see that uh, the graphical method to form stationary wave, and then we have to talk about their specific parts like nodes and anti-nodes. And then we have to uh, measure the wavelength of the standing wave with the help of nodes or antinodes. So first of all, we have to look for superposition. What is superposition? Superposition is the process of interaction of two coherent waves in a medium, resulting in change in displacement. So when two waves, two similar waves, of course, like both the waves must be similar, either sound, both waves should be sound, or both should be water, or both should be rope, or both should be microwaves, like same type of waves should be there. And when they interact with each other, as a result, their displacement changes. This process is known as uh, superposition. Like in this uh, diagram, you can see that two waves are moving towards each other. Like this is uh, the first wave. And let's say its amplitude is x. This is wave A, this is pulse, pulse B. Uh, its displacement is x. And let's say both are moving towards each other. And what will happen is after some time, okay, let's see. Okay, now see. What's happening is at this point, you have to look at this point. What's happening is that both waves are interfering and as a result, their amplitude changes. So this process is known as superposition. Now, what is this coherent? What are the coherent waves? Coherent waves are the waves having constant phase difference between them at all the points. So the coherent waves are actually the identical waves, like they have the same frequency, they have the same wavelength and they have the same speed, but their amplitude can be different. So for example, these two waves are traveling in opposite direction. You can see the top wave is going towards your right and the bottom wave is moving towards your left. So when these are interacting, then this bottom one is the resultant wave which is being formed. Okay, now you can see over here that when these two waves are interacting, like this is the crest and this is the crest. So when both are interacting, so resultant displacement is increasing. And similarly, when both curves are interacting, then the resultant displacement is increasing. So this is like constructive superposition is happening. So you can see, Okay, I just try to. Okay, well, <laughs> this happened in like fifth to sixth attempt. Like this displacement is exactly zero now. So you can see that why the displacement is zero over there. Why it is zero? Because crest of one wave is interfering with the trough of other. So when crest interacts with trough, then resultant displacement is zero. And this is happening everywhere. Crest with trough, crest with trough, trough with crest, crest with trough. So it means that at all the points, the resultant displacement is zero. So this process is known as superposition. The top one was the superposition of two pulses, and this bottom one is the superposition of two waves. What is monochromatic wave? A wave which is having single frequency or wavelength is known as monochromatic wave. Now, what is principle of superposition? The resultant displacement of two interacting coherent waves is equal to algebraic sum of displacements of the individual waves. This is known as principle of superposition. 
Now, what is the outcome of superposition? Number one, displacement of the wave changes, and number two, intensity changes. Like whenever two waves interfere, their displacement is going to change, and we know that uh, we know that intensity is proportional to amplitude squared. So obviously, when amplitude changes, intensity also changes. Okay. So maximum displacement. When maximum displacement is going to happen? This happens when two interacting waves are meeting with identical points at one place. So this is like this. The first diagram. You can see that this is like the crest is meeting with the crest. The trough with trough, crest with trough. So the resultant wave is having maximum amplitude. So this is constructive interference. Then the minimum displacement case. This happens when the two interacting waves with opposite points are interacting. So you can see in the second, crest with trough, trough with crest. Crest with trough, trough with crest. So as a result, the resultant displacement is zero. So this is the superposition. Now, uh, outcome of superposition, standing wave are sir, with, Yeah. Can you explain maximum displacement one more time? Okay, Peter. Peter, maximum, <clears throat> okay, let me insert a slide. Okay, look, let's say two waves are there and one wave is like this. Both waves are traveling this way and the other wave, is also this, and this is this is wave A, this is wave B. Okay, now these two waves are going to interact with each other. So you will see that the crest of this is going to meet with crest of this, and trough of this is going to meet with trough of second. Crest with crest and trough with trough. It means the phase difference between them is zero because the identical points are coinciding crest with crest. If crest with coincide with crest or trough with trough, phase difference is zero. And if crest interacts with trough, then the phase difference is 180 degree. So now if one amplitude is X naught, another one is also X. So the resultant wave will have an amplitude of 2x. So the resultant amplitude is going to increase. So this is your resultant wave, which is due to due to addition of the displacement because this is constructive interference because identical parts of waves are meeting. So that's what is about constructive interference or maximum displacement case. And minimum is of course, opposite to that. Okay, like few more things are coming ahead, you can understand that as well. So let's look upon it, the outcome of the superposition. One is the stationary wave and other one is interference. So right now we have to study the stationary wave. And this is the definition, the superposition of two coherent progressive waves traveling in opposite directions in the same medium is known as stationary or standing waves. Like two waves will be coherent, will be progressive and traveling in opposite direction. And when both the waves will interact with each other, then they will form a standing wave. And the diagram below is exactly showing that. Okay, you can see here that these are the two waves. This is like the first wave and this is the second wave. So these are interacting with each other and it's, they are forming the standing wave. So this in this uh, diagram, in this image, Right now in this image, a standing wave is being formed. Okay, so what are the standing waves and how they are formed? This is very important. Like this question often comes that, what are the standing waves and how they are formed? So standing wave is actually combination of two similar progressive waves having a phase difference of 180 degree or pi radian and traveling in opposite direction in the same medium. 
When the wave interacts such that crest of one wave meets the trough of other, some points of the medium get to zero displacement and other and become static. Due to these static points, the wave is known as a standing wave. So let me tell you the thing. This is the source, and there is a rope, and you are going to move it. You are going to oscillate it. So what will happen is that your first wave, like the rope, is going to move like this. So when it will hit the fixed end, of course, it is going to reflect back at one eight at one eighty degree phase difference. So this is the reflected wave now. So red one is the reflected wave, and the black one is incident wave. So these two will interact with each other, such that two different points, two different type of points are formed. The points which are the dots one are known as nodes. Nodes. So these are static points, and the points between them with the maximum amplitude are known as anti nodes. So these are the anti nodes. So at the source is always anti node, and at the fixed end is always node. So this is known as a standing wave. Now the next thing is how standing waves are formed. How standing waves are formed. So it's very simple. When the incident progressive wave is reflected from a hard obstacle in its way, its face changes to 180 degree with respect to its original state. This reflected progressive wave interacts with incoming progressive wave to form point of maximum displacement that is anti node and minimum displacement that is node, hence forming a standing wave. So you will say that. a uh, incident progressive wave is going towards the obstacle and then it hits the obstacle and it reflects back with a phase difference of 180 degree and it interacts with already incoming wave to form points of minimum amplitude which is node and point of maximum which is anti node so what is meant by speed of standing wave speed so standing wave from its name it appears that it is standing at rest but actually it is not we know that the standing wave is formed by combination of two progressive waves so we say that as the standing wave is formed by the combination of two progressive waves traveling in the same medium but in opposite direction with phase difference of 180 degree so the speed of standing wave is same as speed of progressive interacting waves so speed of standing wave will be same as speed of the two progressive waves which are forming it and we know that the speed of wave depends upon the medium okay what are the parts of standing wave the first one is node this is the point where displacement or kinetic energy or speed is zero second one and all nodes are always on the mean position and anti node is the point where displacement kinetic energy or speed is maximum and anti nodes are formed on the peak of the waveform so you can look from here that the node points are marked the node points are marked with black dots and they are like this these are the node points which are the static points they do not move due to these points we say that this is standing wave and the other points these points these are known as anti node points so these are anti node points and these have maximum amplitude okay now the next thing is one more thing we have to express the wavelength on it so actually this is node this is node 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 and node and these are anti nodes so actually the distance between two adjacent nodes is equal to lambda by 2 similarly the distance between two adjacent anti nodes is lambda by 2 and then the distance between three nodes 1 2 3 3 is equal to lambda or the distance between three adjacent anti nodes is equal to lambda so we say that the distance between three anti nodes or three nodes is equal to lambda and then distance between a node and a node or a anti node and a anti node this distance is equal to lambda by 2 and then one more thing 
the distance between a node and an anti node a node and an anti node that one is equal to lambda by 4 okay now we have to look for the types of the standing waves so there are like two types of standing waves one is the transverse standing wave which is in stretch rope and in electromagnetic waves like radian micro. The other one is longitudinal wave, which is the sound waves in the pipes. So firstly, we have to study the case of stationary waves in stretch ropes. So you can see here, there is a rope and you're plucking it from the middle. So it is going to form a standing wave like this. So this, when this wave is formed, this is known as fundamental mode. Fundamental mode. Or this is known as least frequency mode. Like one loop wave is formed when you plug that wave with the minimum frequency. So let's say this length, uh, L is the length of the rope. And you know that the distance between two nodes is lambda by two. So we'll be saying that length of this rope is equal to lambda by two and lambda from here is equal to two L. Then you know that speed is, wave, uh, sorry, frequency is wavelength, speed over wavelength. So then this first frequency is equal to V over two L because wavelength is two L. So this expression is known as, this expression is known as fundamental frequency. The least frequency that is required to make the standing wave is V by 2L. Similarly, all others are there. Let's say this is the stretch rope. This is the first mode, fundamental. This is the second harmonic. Third harmonic means three loops. Fourth harmonic, fifth harmonic, and sixth harmonic. So in the first harmonic, the frequency is V by 2L. In the second, it is 2F1 or V by L. In the third, it is 3F1 or 3V by 2L. In the fourth, it is 4F1 or it is 2V by L. In the fifth, it is 5F1 or it is 5V by 2L. So these are the frequencies that are required to produce the standing waves in the stretch row. Okay, uh, the second one is the standing waves in the electromagnetic waves. So any type of progressive wave can result in formation of standing wave. That is electromagnetic waves can also result in standing waves. Um, well, what is the use of it? Through the stationary waves process, various wave features can be studied like you can measure the wavelength, you can measure the frequency of the waves. So this standing wave method is actually used to measure the wavelength and frequency of electromagnetic waves. So let's say we have electromagnetic wave as radio or microwave. And what is over task is you have to find its wavelength and then you have to find its frequency. So we will use this standing wave method to measure the wavelength and frequency of the standing waves. Okay, let me tell you the method about it. So first what we do is we have to look for experimental setup experimental setup. Okay, but in experimental setup, first we will look a microwave or radio wave transmitter. This is the transmitter. And then we use an antenna. And this is the antenna. In order to detect that radio wave or microwave, we can connect that to a CRO oscilloscope. And then we have to use a metal reflecting wall because these waves are only reflected by metal walls. Okay. What we will do is we will produce the microwaves from it and or the radio waves. 
and those waves are not visible to us but let's say they are traveling to the metal surface like that and when they will get back the reflected wave let's say interacts with the standing with the incident wave to make a standing wave so now the standing waves are formed but we don't know that whether they are formed or not because we cannot see that so how to see that standing waves are formed how to see that standing waves are formed so what you will do is you will move the antenna you will move the antenna between transmitter and wall like you will move it to this side or you will move to that side so if you move the antenna and then you will get maximum and minimum intensity periodic so maximum and minimum intensity points are located so if maximum and minimum intensity points are located then you will say that a standing wave is being formed okay why is it's like that because at right at the moment where the antenna is anti node is there so when anti node is there then on the crr screen the intensity will be maximum when you move it and you reach to next node the intensity gets zero when you move further to the next anti node the intensity will be maximum again when you move to next node intensity will be zero you move to next anti node the intensity will be maximum you move to next node the intensity will be zero it means that on crr screen if you will get a wave like this then we will say that standing waves are being formed why because where the points where intensity is zero these points are nodes all nodes and the points where intensity is maximum all those points are anti nodes so when this is formed then we say that standing wave is being formed okay next how to measure wavelength okay rich do you know how we can measure the wavelength of this radio wave or microwave um by checking the placement of node and anti node by checking by checking where the anti node nodes are like one anti node to node uski by um lambda by 4 and then depending on how many of them there are yeah okay the thing is you will move you will move the antenna for a set distance so you will move the antenna for a set distance and observe number of anti nodes and nodes so let's say for example you moved your antenna for this distance and you observe these nodes and anti nodes so this is node 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 and node and these are anti nodes so then what you will do is you will express this distance in terms of lambda so you will say this is lambda by 2 between two nodes is lambda by 2 between two nodes is lambda by 2 so you will say that this distance moved is equal to this So it is equal to three lambda by two. So as this distance would be known, distance is three lambda by two. So you can make lambda as the subject. So it is two by three into distance two. So that's how you can find the lambda. And once you get the lambda, you can find frequency easily by using the wave equation d equals f lambda and f equals v by lambda. So doing that, you can find. the frequency of that wave as well so you can repeat the same method repeat the same method for sound waves to measure the frequency or wavelength of the sound wave 
but you will just change the apparatus like you will use a loudspeaker this time with which a source is attached and then you will use microphone and you will attach it to the CRO because microphone or mic is used to detect the sound waves and then there is reflecting wall. So what you will do is you'll do the same thing. You will switch on the loudspeaker and then the sound wave will go towards the wall and then it will be reflected back and then a standing wave is formed. And then you will move your mic for a set distance to measure the wavelength and frequency. Okay, there is one special thing that it's not every time that the standing waves are being formed when you switch on the sound source and you move the mic. If standing waves are not formed, what you will do? Like if standing waves are not formed. So what you will do to make them? You will adjust or change the distance between source and reflecting wall. And then you will try again to form the waves, right? Okay, so can you try this question? Both of you. Try this. C, your answer C. Okay, uh, you said it is C. Aruch, what about you? And you know that Sir, the I'm, I'm still doing it. Okay. It detects four points where the sound intensity is minimal. Four points, that's fine. Note, note, note. And no. Okay. What is the wavelength of the wave? Okay. So, anti node is at the loudspeaker and then four nodes. And between every node is, of course, anti node. So, between one, two, and three is lambda. And between Two nodes is lambda by two, and between a node and anti node is lambda by four. So it is lambda plus lambda by two plus lambda by four. So that is 1.75 lambda. So you will say 1.75 lambda equals L, and lambda is L over 1.75. You don't need Sir, I got what you got. May I be up going on? Yeah, there's 0 0.57. So 0 0.57 or kiss me out there.
خود بتا دیا بیچ میں اس کے چار اینٹی نوڈ لاؤڈ اسپیکر پر اینٹی نوڈ ہے اور اس کے بعد فور نوڈ آئیں گے بفور ہی ریچز دا ریفلیکٹر اور کلوز اینڈ پہ تو ہمیشہ ہوتے ہی نوڈ ہیں اب اس کا مطلب ہے کہ ایک نوڈ ہم نے پہلے کم بنایا تھا اب آپ اگر اس ڈسٹینس کو دیکھو تو اگین اینٹی نوڈ سے اینٹی نوڈ تین اینٹی نوڈ کے بیچ میں لیمڈا اور پھر یہ تین اینٹی نوڈ کے بیچ میں لیمڈا اور پھر اینٹی نوڈ سے نوڈ تک لیمڈا بائی فور So it means this will be lambda plus lambda plus lambda by 4. So this is 2.25 lambda. So this is 2.25 and 2.25. So just divide it and see what's the answer. Up to you. 0.44. So here you have 2 divided by 9, no. 4 divided by 9, yes. So C is the answer. So the trick, the trick was this that I'm going to highlight, this last one. Last one is, we should know that we have a node on reflector. And he said that loudspeaker is an anti-node and after that, four nodes come before he reaches the reflector. اس کا مطلب ہے ففت نوٹ جو ہے وہ آپ کا ریفلیکٹر کے اوپر آتا ہے اچھا یہ تو وہ پائپس بنے اوکے اب بیٹا سٹینڈنگ ویو ان ایئر کولمز لائک جو ایئر ٹیوبز ہوتی ہیں اس کے اندر بھی سٹینڈنگ ویوز بنتی ہیں اب یہ یہاں پہ ذرا میں سمرائز فارم میں آپ کو بتا رہا ہوں دیر آر ٹو ٹائپس آف ٹیوب ون از دا کلوز اینڈ ون اینڈ کلوز اینڈ ون اوپن اینڈ ادر ون از بوتھ اینڈ اوپن ٹیوب تو یہ دونوں کیسز ہیں ایئر کالم از کلوز ایٹ ون اینڈ اینڈ ایئر کالم اوپن ایٹ بوتھ اینڈ سو دا فرسٹ ہارمونک از دا فنڈامنٹل اینڈ دس ہیپنس وین کوارٹر آف دا ویو از فارم لائک ایٹ open end is always anti node and at close end is node so if you look at this diagram which i'm going to share so open end is anti node and close end is node so the wavelength will be 4l why wavelength would be 4l because the distance between a node and an anti node is lambda by 4 so you will say that this lambda by 4 is l and then lambda is 4l So that's why lambda is 4L. And then the fundamental frequency is F1 is V by 4L. So this is the minimum frequency that is required to produce standing wave in our close end pipe. Okay, then what happened is you change the frequency. So then again, you heard the louder sound and that one is third harmonic because this time the frequency is three times of the fundamental frequency. So what happened is that This is formed like half loop and a full loop. And then again, we measure the distance in terms of lambda. So like between two nodes is lambda by two and node and anti-node is lambda by four. So the total wavelength of this wave is four by three L. And then in the fifth harmonic, why the second and fourth is not there? Because that cannot be formed over there. So fifth harmonic is like two full waves and one half, uh, two full loops and one half loop is there. You measure its wavelength and then you measure its frequency. So let me take you back to the tube. Let's say this is the tube and a loudspeaker is there and it is going to play a fixed frequency. And what will happen is that 
if this wave is formed, node and anti-node, so this is the first time you hear the louder sound. First time hearing louder sound. So that is known as fundamental mode. And that is also known as least frequency mode. Like you hear the louder sound with least frequency. So then you say that this L is equivalent to lambda by four, and then lambda is four L. And then you say V is F lambda, and F is V by lambda. So V by four L. So you say the first frequency that you have to play in order to make the standing wave is V, v by four L. In the similar way, for the close ended pi, for the both ends open pi, you have to keep the loudspeakers at both ends, like here and here as well. And you connect them with the same source. You connect them with the same source. And then you play such that when the for, for the first time you hear the louder sound, it will be like this, a node in the middle and anti-node at the open ends. So then you say this length is equivalent to lambda by four plus lambda by four. This is lambda by two and from there lambda is 2L. And then again, you say V is F lambda and F is V by lambda. So the first harmonic frequency is V by 2L. So in the close-ended pipe, it was V by 4L and in the open-ended pipe, it is V by 2L. Okay, now the other range of frequencies that can there that can be there for these pipes, such that you can play those and the standing wave can form is F1, 3F1, 5F1, 7F1, and so on. Like odd multiple of min least frequency. Odd multiple of least frequency is required to produce standing wave. Over here, it is F1, 2F1, 3F1, 4F1, and so on. So all the multiples of fundamental frequency, all multiples of these frequency can be used to form standing waves. Okay. Um, water tube case. Okay, let's say there is some water and you are having a tube in it and you have inserted a tube in it like this and you are holding a tuning fork, a vibrating tuning fork on top of the tube, and you're trying to judge where you can hear the louder sound, where you can hear the louder sound. And then you will be moving the tube upward so that the length of the air column can be increased. So there are two things, like from here to here, this is water column because the tube is full with water. And here in the top, it is air column because there is no water, but air is there. So of course, the louder sound will be produced in the air column. So let's say, when you take it the first time here, you take it to the top of it, you listen to the louder sound. You are holding the tuning focus there, and you heard the louder sound. So whenever you heard the louder sound, you will say the first standing wave is being formed. So it will be like this. And then this is, let's say, the length. So you will say the length is equal to lambda by 4, and lambda is equal to 4 L. And then again, you keep pushing it up. So for this, when it reaches this length, you heard the louder sound for the second time. So you will say this is the second harmonic, so it will be like this. So now you will find the length. So the thing is, you can form the standing wave by changing the length as well by changing the frequency as well and by changing the length as well.
Okay, just hold on for a while. Okay, so there's a question. Okay, this is the question that you will solve. Let me just fetch the other part. Here is the question. Okay, this is the question that you have to solve. So quickly look at it. Try to solve it. You have only four minutes to do this. Sir, I'm going to leave join in a minute. Okay. Sir, um, are you, are you showing the question? Yeah. I can't see the question. You can't see the question, really? Yeah, I can't. Oh, hold on. Come on. Sorry, what I have done is, well, I've pasted it somewhere else. Yeah, this is the question now, sorry. Can you see now? No, you can't no. see. No. Can you see now? Yes. Yes. Okay, this is the question.
Okay, let me quickly help you. Uh, okay, so complete the two graphs to illustrate what is meant by the amplitude, A, wavelength, and time period. So amplitude like here is the displacement. Along y-axis, you take the displacement. Along x-axis, if you take the distance, it will give you the wavelength from here to here. And if you take the time, that will give you the time period. So that's what you have to learn. Then next they're saying that rope is there between X and Y, you're stretching it. The speed of progressive wave is 30 